be out there working, bro. Like, like I said, we got a lot of red. Isn't it Wingwood? Yeah, that, that, exactly. That Wingwood. Yeah, yeah, Green Bay, it was like man. more of a twin. What's up, What's man? What's up with it? Oh, it's good. Great to meet you, man. Sure. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. yeah. How much you weigh? 205. 205. Yeah. That's what you know to play at? Yeah, 20, usually like 203, 205. I came in the league 216. Right. Uh, that, I, I that college workouts, though. College workouts, I thought I needed to be the biggest dude. Right. Right. I still look big as hell in the uniform. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you like, are. You know what I'm saying? And you're tall, too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. They you know, say you used to baby hoop a little bit. Man, look, I was, I'm a hooper for real. I just figured this football thing out a little right. late. You know what I'm saying? Look up T. Higgins High School basketball. Oh, boy. He went crazy? Oh, my God. I know the boy looked like a hooper hey. the way he moved. Like, yeah, yeah. you, you he always know. You can see him. North Carolina, yeah, he got North Michigan. Carolina, Michigan, all like, of them. How tall is that boy? He like six five, coach. Yeah. He's six. And he's good. See, if I was six five, y'all would have never met me. <laughs> <laughs> y'all would have met me. Six five. Yeah, right, yep. right, yeah. Hey, 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 yes, hey, sir. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a boy. You see, you Yeah. Ooh, money. Was good. Sorry for the wait. <laughs> I my car, baby. Yes, sir. Oh, look, bro. It's, 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 it's on your time. You know, you were fake working out in there anyway. It's training camp. Yeah, no, I was moving big weight. <laughs> it's training camp. Money. Bro. Oh, shit. It's fake working out, man. Yeah. How you feeling, man? Feel good, man. Good. Feel real good. We saw you out there dop dopping the ass. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like today, too, for real. Like, I ain't even get, I ain't see a whole bunch of balls today, but. Yeah, yeah. That's how it be. Then one on one, we were feeling sorry. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, we were feeling sorry for the DB. I don't even know the DB's right. names. I'd be like, uh oh. Uh -oh. Right, I'm like, <laughs> the especially thing we ain't got the names you, on there. But you ain't going to win it with him, though. One on ones? But they think they going to win, yeah. but they. One on one is tough, man. Win. I don't think they think that. I don't think, that. I, don't think I, I don't think I haven't won one, like, the whole time. I think I've won every single one on one so far. You're supposed camp. to, though. Yeah. You're the best in the world. Like. <laughs> And Michael Jordan <laughs> yeah. playing one on one, I expect yeah, him to score. Yeah, yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? No yeah, help yeah. defense. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, you go awesome. eat. Hold up, limitless. Take a step and cap pinning it. I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling got me up. On the mission got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a step and cap pinning it. I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling got me up. First off, man, thank you for the time. Uh, you know, uh, we understand what it's like in training camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? But welcome to the pivot. All the subscribers, obviously, you know who this man is, Devontae Adams. We want you to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Make sure you like. And like we said, man, this is the training camp tour. There's a lot of other podcasts, but they aren't us. Uh, anybody can podcast, but not everybody can pivot. And so, man, we're going to jump right into it because we know you have a lot of time. Obviously, every time we come into this show, I'm like, okay, what's the one thing that I could talk to somebody about that they don't get from ESPN, NFL Network? And I know you've told this story, but being from the South, which all three of us are, California is a different place for us. Yeah. And you make a huge distinction in your life of telling people you're from East Palo Alto, yeah. not Palo Alto. Yeah. Why is that so important to you? Well, I don't know if you ever heard the the example that I use, but it's it's close in proximity, it's, but it's it's two different cities. I mean, it's like in Lion King, you got Pride Rock, and then you got the Elephant Graveyard right there on top of each other, but it's a whole different world. So yeah. I just like to, you know what I'm saying? And I'm proud of where I'm from, too, right. you know? So, so it, it ain't a whole lot of people. from the Elephant Graveyard? Yeah, I'm from the Elephant Graveyard, man. I, I, I mean, I'm proud, I'm proud of where I'm from. I'm not proud of stuff that, you know, contributes to the reason why it's not the same, but mm -hmm. um, it is what it is, and I, I stand on, you know, where I'm from. You know, a lot of that has has built up who you are, and obviously we we see the skill, right? And we see how, how talented you are, how you understand leverages, how you understand stems, defenses, all of those things. I was reading something about your mom, your mom's name's Pamela, yep. right? And, and how you her baby, Yeah. you know, and it said in, I think it was 2015, you guys were together and you told her that you hated football. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a tough time for you after, what was it? 1700 in your last year, 24 tubs, all those things. And you were going through it, not getting the football. Yeah. What was that time like and how did she help you through it? I mean, that time, that was, a, that was a dark time. That was probably the lowest point that I've had in my, well, not probably, definitely was the lowest point, you know, cause not everything went according to plan like early on. You know, I, I didn't play football till my junior year. You know, we talked about that. At the level, the NFL level, you know, when you make mistakes or, you know, you come in as a higher draft pick, everything is magnified way more, you know, when you do make mistakes. And then, you know, that was the year Jordy hurt his knee. So I was kind of thrusted into that number one or, you know, me and Cobb were both kind of like the one. I was outside. 
Uh, but I got kind of thrusted into that role, and you know, there's a lot of expectations, which I was firing with all of that. You know, I'm, not, I'm definitely, I don't even, I don't think too much about that type of stuff. But getting hurt, you know, the second game of the year, and having that linger throughout the whole time, and then you know, having a bunch of drops and stuff like that. Not that I let that go to my head, but it was just, you know, when the, when the mistakes start to compound and you're a young player, it's hard to deal with, you know, some of that stuff if if you don't have your mind all the way right. And I didn't, you know, it was, it was hard for me to bounce back. And, you know, I, I had a, a very down year. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. score to the last game of the, of the season um, against the Lions. And uh, we know that, that that's not how the, the scope of things, you know, at this point. So it's a lot different now. And, you know, I was able to come out of that just because my, my circle, my mom is was in my corner, my dad, same way. And uh, people always ask, you know, how was Jordy? How was Randall in that? The best answer I could give is I feel like they were exactly how they should be. They, they saw the way I worked. They saw the, they knew the type of player I was. So every day was like a, a normal day. It wasn't like, oh, let's try to pick Tay up. Like right. they already knew, you know, the type of dude that I was. So they just wanted me to kind of organically get my confidence back. And then, um, you know, it took into that next year, unfortunately, you know, uh, to get back to where I, where I really felt like me. But, you know, when you have injuries and stuff like that, end up behind the ball, you know, you're on Thanksgiving Day and, and you got three drops, you know, in critical moments. It was raining and stuff like that. You know, it's just a, a lot of things that go into it, but it, it can be a lot for a young dude. So I, I did, uh, I had a lot of comfort from my, my inner circle that, that kind of got me back on track. Getting past that threshold, though, that's interesting, though, because, bro, you a dog. You my, you you in my top three. I won't Ooh. tell you my top three, but. Top oh, three? Top, you talking oh, about don't that? Don't start like, You in my top three. Players? Receivers. Oh. <laughs> nah, nah, you know, I, you want to go players now. I, you in my top ten. Oh, damn, damn. Okay. <laughs> this is but, what he do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I talk, I talk shit. That's, I, what, yeah, that's you know, fine, you know, man. That's man. fine. But, bro, yeah. just hear, hearing you, like, when I was hearing you talk about that, it's so interesting. Is there a threshold? Like, did you know you was out of that funk? Because we talked we talk to um, T. Higgins. Yeah. And he was talking about the mental stuff, you know, saying that he it was a time where he had to deal with that stuff. Like, as, as you're the you're one of the best receivers in the world, He's the best receiver in the world. Yeah, you you was about to say it, and then you switched it up because he had to stick with. It. I, I guess good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you're one of the best receivers in the world. But like, do you know when it clicks? Like, do you wake up one morning? Like, just hear yeah. you talk about a thing. Like, when when does that? When, did when, when is that not on your mind no more? I mean, going into that that first game in 2016, I had a moment and everybody was laughing because I, I had a touchdown right before the half. So we went in and, and doubled up. So we scored right before, a couple of seconds before the half. And I had a lame ass celebration because it was just just pure passion. <laughs> like, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I had one touchdown all all year, the, the year yeah. before that. So I bounced back and I catch one on, uh, on the right side where I had to like dive. It was an and one and everything. And I slammed the ball, had the most just lame spike. <laughs> and I'm pointing at the back of my jersey trying to remind people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm really him. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I had a little off time, but I'm back. Yeah. But that was just the passion. I think that that was the moment when I made that play. It was a, it was a difficult play. I hurt my knee in the, in the playoff game against the Redskins. That was the last game that I was able to play in in 2015. So I, did, I couldn't really use that game where everything was kind of doing this and then I get hurt. So that was kind of my moment where I was like, all right, I'm back. And then, you know, Ran off and had 12 tugs that year, and then it was, you know, what I'm saying I, I knew what I knew what the deal was. That's crazy. You was a red shirt freshman mm -hmm. in college, 2011, drafted 2014, right? Yep. yep. Uh, the ninth receiver selected. Ninth one. I ninth can tell one. You, everyone. Above I, I was gonna say top three, but I was gonna go on record and say you are number one in my book. I appreciate. I don't know that. what Chan talking about. We do none of us do. But <laughs> being the ninth receiver selected is that an extra sense of motivation? Has that been? Extra sense of motivation for you? It was early, but I'm telling you at this point, like, all my motivation comes from within. Like, you know, it's, it's nothing that Chan could say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's nothing that, I mean, it's a couple people, I don't even want to put their name out there, I don't even want to give them that juice, but right. it's, you know, it's listen, this and that, people say what they say, but at this point, that stuff don't even fire me up no more. Like, mm. it's, it's all about me. I don't I don't really care about the, you know, the, the lists and all of that, like, like ranking people, like, I didn't know if y'all was going to have me rank receivers today, but if I was to rank them, then I wouldn't even put me in there because at this point, you know, and this is this ain't this is just just pure confidence and in, in believing in myself and knowing where I am in my game, you know, today. Like, I don't to me, it's not even a question of whether or not I got to, like, say if I'm the best receiver in the league. Like, 
I just let the tape speak. I go out there and I'm, and I'm more consistent than anybody. I'm more dialed in than anybody, and I don't let no big moments get past me, you know, and I, and I know the type of player that I am and the, the way that I attack the game mentally now. So I could, I could rank receivers and all of that, but I'll go ahead and, you know, put everybody else out there right. just so I get more names included because it's, it's so many dudes, and it's damn near impossible to even make a make top a five today. I mean, yeah. it's because things change, but like I said, with the, the difference between I feel like myself and other people is that it haven't really changed for a while. Like, mm -hmm. as far as, you know what I mean, people talking Period about, time, you know what yeah. I mean, over, over the course of however many years you want to say. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm real confident in myself and what I bring to the game. So at this point, that type of stuff, you know, the ninth receiver, I came in definitely with a chip on my shoulder right. because of stuff like that. You know, I did what I did numbers wise, and I felt like I showed, you know, the world that, you know, I'm, I was, I was the best or one of the best, um, you know, receivers coming out. So to be drafted the ninth overall or ninth receiver overall, I thought that it was foolish. But, you know, at, at this point, right. that, that stuff don't, control. yeah, it don't really motivate me no more. You just did an interview. Well, during your departure, you spoke about your decision leaving Green Bay. Yeah. And you said uh, you were quoted as saying, I have aspirations on doing a really big thing and being remembered. Mm -hmm. What are some of those aspirations? I mean, I want to be in that hall, man. It's, it's only 29 in my position in there. And I think about that. I got that on my alarm clock when I wake up. Go get it for your girls and slash 29 in there right. just to remind me every day. Mm. When did you start thinking about the Hall of Fame? Because for me, I never thought about it. Yeah. I never thought about a 10,000 yard club, none of that. Yeah. But at some point when they say it's close, I yeah. said, oh, I got to go get it. When did you start thinking about that? You know what? I don't even I don't even know, honestly. I, I don't even know when it, like the, the year was or whatever, but it's always it's always been a goal. You know what I mean? When you when you're a guy and you got a lot of confidence in what you bring to the game, you know, I'm sure you thought about it like like it'd be cool to be in there. And that's the way I thought yeah. about it, you know what I'm saying? But I say maybe over the past like couple years, like when I fully understood, it wasn't even about the the resume. It was really just about I know the the type of ball I'm playing right now and you know, why not? Like, Marshall Falk was just, Marshall Falk, you know, when he when he started, we all had right. zero, zero, zero across. Yeah. So, and these dudes get in and, you know what I mean? Randy Moss, like, everybody, like, you come in at different levels, obviously, but right. if you got zero stats, that it don't matter what your name was before. So, they, they don't discriminate. They, they gonna let whoever in there that, that put together the best resume. So, you know, I, I figure if, if I am where I am right now, and I, I know I can continue to build that, I, you know, I got a chance. But so you, I, you're not a diva. Nah. Nah. But great receivers are divas. <laughs> like, no, no, they, I ain't never said that. Nah, bro, you're not a diva. Like, nah, man, I'm, why, I'm low why key. Not, like, why not, though? Because, I mean, I feel like a lot of dudes wasn't like that. Like, they wasn't divas their whole life. They turned into that because mm -hmm. they felt like that's who they're supposed to be because they on top. But for me, I got to this point in my, in, you know, in my career, in my game, in my life, by being who I am. And, you know, I'm not the type of dude, I don't go link with a bunch of NFL players in the off season. Like when I take trips, I'm with my homies that I went to high school with, you know, middle school people I grew up with. It's guys that's teammates and stuff like that, that like you, you hear me talking about being organic. Like that's, that's me. Like I'm gonna go kick it with, you know what I mean? The long snapper and, and go out to, you know, go to the casino or something before I go kick it with just a big name receiver in the league. Like, unless we got a genuine, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? relationship or bond or whatever we really connected like I got a couple guys like that but for the most part like I'm just I'm just low-key man I stick to stick to my guns and and just be me I was with my homeboy Joe with you know we text about it uh, this weekend and I was just asking about you and he said he had to do a presentation when he was in Green Bay where he graded the wide receivers on the team yeah and this was Jordy was still there and mm -hmm. he was like Devontae's the best receiver and here's why yeah uh, and obviously it ends up being right but he said no I don't know if this is true, but I'm a, he said that y'all were at Micah Hyde's wedding, mm -hmm. right? And they're having a conversation. This is when Julio was balling, AB was balling. They were talking about the best receivers and all those things. Right. And that you said, if y'all were on a clip by a cliff or something, mm -hmm. that if you had to throw one football, and if that football wasn't caught, they were going to throw us off this cliff, they better throw it to me. You know what I mean? And so, like, when I hear that, that type of confidence, I think you can't help but when you combine that with hard work, end up being where you are. A lot of what's been attributed to, not a lot of, but some of what's been attributed to your success was the quarterback you got to play with mm -hmm. your entire life or your entire career. And now you leave and you said, I'm going from one Hall of Famer to another. But what was that experience like being with somebody as talented, obviously a future first ballot Hall of Famer in Aaron Rodgers? 
It was amazing, man. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't discount anything, you know, that, that Aaron was able to do for me because, I mean, he, he's the best quarterback, you know, in my opinion, to play this game. I think a lot of what he did for me was not just about the type of balls or whatever that he threw, you know, great back shoulder, whatever. Like, there was obviously that, but the, the way that he, he had the Michael Jordan effect as far as, like, he going he gonna to make you play better. He going he gonna to bring out your best just by being on the field. It's not even about, like, like he was a great leader, but it was, it was more so just about I'm out here with Aaron Rodgers. Like, you would always notice in OTAs, like, you know, every now and then a, a guy that's in his, what, 15th year at that point or whatever, they get days off in OTA, so it'd be times where he wasn't practicing, and you would just notice people start to like, not not fall off, not not practicing hard, but it wasn't the same as when Aaron is out there. Like he he like you don't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody doing something versus versus like with nobody watching them type thing. You know, you obviously gonna run a little harder. Your coach watching you, so it was kind of that type of effect, and he he made me a better player out of that because the consistency came from that, and then. Um, yeah, I just try to build on that, and, and like I said, obviously the football and the arm strength and stuff was a, was a big part of it. But, but yeah, he, he made me a better player just by his presence. October second, twenty fourteen, you scored your first NFL touchdown. Mm -hmm. In the same time, that was Aaron's uh, two hundred yeah. TD uh, pass. Mm -hmm. Who kept the ball? Who got? The ball? <laughs> he let me keep that one for sure. He let me keep that. Did one. he sign it? He did. I didn't. I don't even think I asked him to sign it for real. I just. I just wanted to keep it. I don't. I don't know. But he. Uh, yeah. He let me have that one. So I. I made sure I. I gave him the four hundred. Because I guess one hundred James Jones threw into the crowd. Right. Two hundred he gave to me. So he didn't have any one of those. And three hundred I don't remember who got it. But then four I was remember being on the left side caught one when a stiff arm dude and then went straight to him presented it to him and everything just because I remember about the you know that that number two hundred that he let me keep. Yeah, bro. The 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 like you said drafted the Green Bay. And I, I always party. When I play, mm. when I go to a city, as yeah. soon as we get to the city, I will drop my bag off and go to a strip club. And I, <laughs> I wanted to see what the city had to offer. That's why I, I'm, yes, I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm not even thinking about Hall of Fame because it's probably, probably a part of it, bro. Maybe, but maybe. you're in Green Bay and you go to Vegas. Yeah. And you see my eyes red right now because we've been in Vegas too long. <laughs> I ain't go to bed till 5 a.m. because yeah. it's Vegas. Yeah. What's the difference between playing in Green Bay and now you're in Las Vegas? Yeah. Like, is it, a, it? How big is that difference? I mean, it's a it's a difference because it's you got more at your disposal. But I'm not I'm not a big I'm not a big strip club dude, especially not during no camp and all of that. So yeah. I'm not taking advantage of that type of stuff. But it's a lot of stuff, you know. Um, that I'm able to do here that I probably couldn't do in Green Bay. You know, mm -hmm. like, I didn't really go, in, I couldn't go in public a whole lot in Green Bay just based on, you know, it's a real small community. It's not really built, like, even the restaurants you can go to, it's not really built for having, like, you know, a super, quote unquote, superstars that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't just go sit in the middle of a restaurant, like, the, the same way that I could, you know, my first couple years in the league. Like, yeah. it's a different, especially in the city you play in. So to be able to go, take advantage and have my whole family, let my daughters run around and, and do their thing and have a little private room eating and stuff like that. That's the type of stuff I'm doing. I'm not, yeah. I ain't really getting it in the way you get it in. <laughs> no, 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 bro, I got kids too. Yeah. I, got, I got kids and we go out as a family, but then I also go out as a grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, I, I might go to the casino and do something where it's a private type of deal, but everything I like to do, like I said, I'm low key. I don't really like people knowing what I'm up to and you know, I don't really, I'm not really up to a whole lot of bad stuff any, either way, but if I do do something, I try to keep it on the low. Chan, see, the difference is this, Chan, also, what, what you missed, right? You're about to hurt, you, <laughs> he's gonna be about to hurt my feelings. No, I'm not about to hurt the feelings. Do. What okay. I'm gonna say is this, the man said everything he does, he gets a private room. When they give you 125, Hey. Right? You can do that. You can get a private room everywhere you go. See, you got 140. My bad. 140. 141.25. 141.25. I'm sorry. So, so there is so there in tells you. My lid. But speaking of, you know, speaking of that, you know, I was uh, you know, talking about the, the 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 deal and now being here, you know, you mentioned that is a closer to family. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have that. But also part of your family has been Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys play at Fresno State together. And I had an opportunity to rank the AFC West uh, offensive skill players. And I put the Raiders first, um, obviously because of you. But Hunter, uh, Darren is an alien. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Derek is underrated Extremely. from a talent standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think he is a top 10 talent at the position, when you look at where you guys are this year and all the expectations that start once you become a part of the team, what is your outlook for the Las Vegas Raiders in 2022? 
Well, I mean, as far as expectations, I don't really have any, but but as far as goals, I mean, it is no surprise. I mean, you know, you know what the deal is. You know, that's what every team sets out with the same same uh, goal, you know, in the end. So we obviously got that in our back pocket, but and we got the roster to be able to do something special like that. But at the end of the day, if we don't go out there and really do something about it and practice the way we're practicing right now, you know, be extremely hard on ourselves because that's one thing about me. Like, I'm going to come in after every single game and I'm going to have way more notes on corrections and things that I felt like I could have done better throughout the course of the game than the, you know, the coaching staff gave me at, you know, 100% of the time. So, um, you know, if we, if we stay like that and we maximize what we do have on our roster, then we could do some special things. So that's, that's what's on, on my mind at all times, especially coming from, uh, you know, a place like the Packers where that's, Every we, year, every year you, you're expecting to do something special like that. You know, obviously eight years I wasn't able to get one, but, you know, we, we had some really successful seasons and we did things. It just wasn't able to get it done in some of the, those critical moments. But you know what's on my mind, so that's, that's what I'm here for. I ain't come here just to be cute and hang out with Derek and do all of that. Like, I want to I wanna get that trophy, you know, at, at the end of the year. So you have, now you have, you have Coach Josh McDaniels here. And, um, you know, he's a championship caliber coach. Uh, long tenure, you know, co uh, offensive coordinator there in yeah. New England. Have you guys established a Raiders way here, much like what they had in, in New England? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been a part of the, the Patriots organization, obviously, but I, I would imagine that it's a lot in all the good ways. Like, it's, it's got to be a lot of, you know, what he's learned there, you know, as far as the, the discipline. And you, he went from probably the most disciplined team to, you know, on quote unquote, one of the, the most undisciplined teams, yeah. you know, based off of some of the things that have happened. And, you know, I, I'm not afraid to say it like I'm, I'm a proud Raider, but it's been some some crazy stuff that went on, you know, right. especially within the past few years here. Yeah. So, um, you know, he definitely is, uh, I would say hard on us, but he's, he's the way that he should be when you're dealing with a lot of, you know, younger guys. It's not we don't have the most experienced team in the world. So he's doing a lot of things, and I love Josh, man. I'm telling you that right now. I, I, I even tell him, I texted him the other day. I said, I've really been enjoying you, man. Like, just having you around and, and your leadership, the way you, the way you lead men is, is it's impressive to me. You know, I've, I've had a couple different coaches, and I've had, you know, Matt LaFleur, who was a lot of the same and extremely talented um, in, in a workhorse. But Josh is one of those guys that you can tell that he, he, he was a sponge, you know, being the offensive coordinator that whole time. And obviously he had a shot at it before and it didn't go, I'm sure, the way he would have hoped. But um, yeah, I've really been enjoying him and his staff too. They, they get it and they understand how to, how to deal with guys like me, you know, just because, you know, and when I say that, I mean, you know, he was talking about I'm not a diva, but I'm, at the end of the day, I've experienced a lot and I've learned from a lot of dudes who, who know what they're talking about. So at the end of the day, I feel like my feedback is, is valuable. So. Um, when I go and talk to him about certain routes or, you know, things, the way that I want to run certain things, the, the way he's open and receptive to it makes it, you know, easy to come to work every day. But, and, and to that point, like, being that number one guy, being like you said, what do you say, 141, mm -hmm. 2756, Correct. whatever, yeah. yeah. Like, in a game, bro, do you ever be like, bitch, throw me the ball? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you number one, they sing covering me. Yeah. Bitch, throw me the ball. Like, I don't care what your plan is yeah. or what your scheme is. Throw me the rock. Well, I, I like to think that my quarterback's on the same thing. I mean, yeah. Derek do that in practice now. Like, I don't even have to say that. Like, I'm, I, I try to show it enough. Like, I get my confidence the way that I do out there at practice. Like, I, I get the game look every time I get a rep. Like, I'm never just going to go run a route and lollygag. Like, you're gonna get to work every single time we, we line up. Like, that's just how it is. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm expecting and hoping that I'm gonna murder you every play, but that ain't the reality of it, but I'm gonna set out to do just that. I'm trying to chop your head off every single time we line up to show the quarterback, like, there's no other option. If we are all singled up, I'm the guy that need the ball. Like, that's, that's the mentality, and if I don't, I'm coming to a place where everybody can really win on any, if, if, mm -hmm. if Hunter's singled up, yeah. I know Hunter gonna win that. And if yeah. Darren's singled up, Hunter, uh, Darren might go and score, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. based off some of the matchups he's dealing with. So, and me, I was, that's real. That's, that's real. So, uh, and, yeah. and that's, that's, what, that's what fired me up. And really, it's more than that. Get deeper. Like, we got, we got a lot of dudes that's on the same type of time. So, mm -hmm. for me, like, like I said, every time I line up, like, even today, I had one. I ended up getting double. But Derek, as soon as he called uh, goal line phase, he said, hey, go get it. I'm like, 
You ain't had to say that, but I appreciate it. I, at least I know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At least I know. Yeah, yeah. What, what's that reunion been like? You know, uh, did you guys have like some special chemistry back at Fresno? Absolutely. Like some special signals, eye contact? Oh yeah. Like, what's no, the We had, man, we had, cause everything in the, in the Fresno offense was basically signals. Like we was on the ball. I think Oregon was the only team that was faster than us. Like play, had more plays run throughout the game. So everything was signal. So it got to the point where he'd be, hey, Tay, look over and by the way, Derek started Tay. I don't know. People don't really know that, so I'm gonna let everybody know. Oh wow. Tay, I, everybody called me D D Money. Like growing up, like that's what it was. It was it was more D. He started that, so he'd look out Tay, and he he'd be like, and I and I know just based off coverage, we got zero. We only that ain't that ain't even a signal. He'd look over like, hey, <laughs> right. And I'm like, I might have a slant, fade right, right. now, throw it, beat him off the line, and that's where. That's really where the releases started, and, and right. people starting to give me like that that crown of being able to, you know, what I'm saying, get off the line of scrimmage was that it was a lot of it was a lot of situations where I got to win now, especially right. like I go to Green Bay and I'm playing with dudes like like Jordy and Randall. I got to show Aaron if he look over there, I, he like yeah. he ready to get this ball right now. So that's why I just started saucing dudes and doing that. But it really started at Fresno, look over and get that look from from Derek like <laughs> something like that, and then I know. Up, I'm up at the sideline. Do you know before the, the snap? Because that's one thing, the release. It's funny you brought it up. The release, like, that's what all on Twitter, Instagram, all the yeah. videos about you yap yapping them at the line. Yeah. Is it premeditated? Never. Or do you do you just Never. ball? Never. I, I, I got a plan every time I get up to the line based off of what you're doing. And I put my Terminator mask on. And if you right here in, in, in front of me, I drop down a scroll, three ideas or something that I want to do based off of, and this is pre-snap. So that's when you, the, Plan B kick in based off what you do. Cause you know, I come off and I, I got the patented, you know what I'm saying? I skip off and kind of hop off the ball, yeah. but it's really an illusion. And I could talk about it. I could talk about it all day. Cause at the end of the day, it's about the presentation. Like if you, if you in front of me and I make you feel like I really want to get inside and I really show you everything that, sh that looks like I'm getting inside, you got to respect that. And if you don't, I'm going to go inside and I'm going <laughs> to figure out a way to go do it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. It's, a, it's really about the, the route discipline, and, and I just, I get up there, like I said, I, I scroll down, three three ideas of something I want to do, you right in my face, you playing soft shoe press and you're about two yards off, boom, I got three for that. You off five yards and you and you squatting on me, I got three for that, I'm gonna get up to you. It's all about just killing that space and attacking, making DBs uncomfortable, and then now it's real life. It ain't about them drills you did, them backpedal drills you going to do in your 45. All of that is out the window when 1-7 running full speed at you, and I'm gonna get this close before I make a move. <laughs> And then may, it might it might be a plan B, but I'm gonna make talk it look like play shit. one. Hey, like that was crazy. First <laughs> off, I'm gonna be honest, I've actually never heard you talk this much. <laughs> right? And I'm just like I'm just being straight up. Y'all get me fired up. Yeah, man. I'm just, I'm just being get straight me fired up. up. No, you you know, and we talked about you hooping. Like a lot of what we see, it almost looks like you got a basketball yeah. in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Being able to lean a guy this way and come back. And I I coach DBs, and so mm -hmm. we talk about it in different things, but you now get the matchup every week, mm -hmm. right? It's either you're going to get the matchup of the guy when they have a top five guy or a guy they think is the lead, or you're right. going to get the, the, the shaded coverage. You're right. going to get the shaded safety. You're going to get the double to your side. The competition of that, knowing that you've played yourself into that role every week you're facing an opponent, what does that do for you? I mean, that, that, that fired me up too, you know, just knowing that and I, and it, it make me, it raised my level of play because at the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot of teams that just say, you know, we gonna, we gonna try to just let these other dudes do what they do. Like, we gonna make them beat us. We not gonna let 1-7, but if I just fall into that and say, all right, I'm gonna just take the double every time, which helps the team, but if I don't win, then I ain't getting the ball. So at the end of the day, regardless if I'm getting doubled, if I'm getting a best guy or whatever, I gotta go win in the same way I would win or I would be expected to win if I was singled up just because I need that pill at the end of the day. So if I get two people on me or if I get clouded or whatever, I got to find a way to go, you know, make myself a, a, a good target for my quarterback. Hey, one seven, we know you got meetings, man. So yeah. we're going to let you go. Why 17? Why, why 17? Yeah, why 17? As as the best or, the, or why, why the Why'd you choose the number? Keep it real, I, I wanted 15, but I went to the Packers and, and Bart Starr was, was 15 there. So obviously you couldn't get that. And I'm not a big, I'm not a big 80s number guy. Not, not for me. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm part of a younger generation, I guess. Still, still old soul, but I'm part right. of a younger generation. So 17 was the next best one. And I was thinking like, who is the coldest to ever wear 17, like, and really make a name? And then, you know, some guys that, that you respect, but I was like, it ain't really nobody that really, really did it at the level that I feel like I can do it. So 
I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just turn it into something, and then you see it's a lot of 17s out there, people wearing now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And they, I, I didn't really see it before, before I started, you know, what I'm saying doing what I'm doing. So he'll kill me if I don't, if I don't give him a shout out. Plexico Burris, 117. 100. <laughs> percent And I'm saying like, you know, what I mean, and that's no disrespect to, to yeah. nobody. It's, sure. it's just a lot For of, sure. it's a lot of dudes that wore it and, and got it in. But yeah. like I said, to the level that I'm looking at, right. you know, what I mean, as, as far as like we talked about that hall. I, I could be wrong, but I don't know if it's anybody where, that wore 17 that's in, that's in that hall. I will hall. say this, the, the only number 17 that I remember is, that I truly remember is Doug Williams, because he's the first black quarterback mm -hmm. uh, to win a Super Bowl. He's from Louisiana, man. Listen, I'm going to be honest, bro. We got to run it back, because we didn't have enough time to, nah, to, can, really, do to really get it, man. We love to run it back. But thank you for your time, dog. We understand what this time is. Is like in the middle in the middle of training camp for you. So yeah. we appreciate you, man. Keep balling. Of course. We bro. see you soon, boy. Yes, sir. Thank you, my boy. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Man, what do you think, man? Yes, sir. My question. No, no. Hey. I want to see what shit. What 140 million? Big <laughs> <laughs> respect, bro. Appreciate you it. Take sure. oh. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh. we could definitely do this again. I ain't, I ain't gonna be on ESPN talking the way that uh, I no, talk no, with y'all. You know, yeah, man. Yeah. You take the picture real quick. What you gonna take? So you gotta go. Yeah. Hey, we started talking that talk about their releases. Though. I'm gonna yeah. get fired up. That's that. I love that motherfucker. When I when I start talking about that shit, like that's no, I, you I know I'm about the details. So that yeah. that's when I really I really get the feeling. It you know what I mean? When you hit the Terminator oh, no. mask though. No, yeah. it's funny. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. That's how, that's right. And you can visualize it though, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? 100, bro. Uh, yeah, no, that's the shit. These running backs gotta be so happy, boy. I'm telling Cover you, but two. let's get hey, it. Light box. Let's get it. Let's go. But that's the thing, they, too. They, got a, they ain't got a chance. They, they, like, Josh always was a matchup guy. Like, every yeah. week he changed you. I think about that. Every play, he got that. Yeah. If Devontae got it, yeah. Darren got it, Hunter got it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can mm -hmm. run it. And I'm moving around like crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, right. this, this learning shit, like, mm -hmm. it feel like college again, because this right. offense is, like, got to be the most complex in the league. Everybody that went to New England would say that, bro. They were saying. It was, like, 11, 12. Yeah, so I'm oh. damn near unlearning a bunch of shit. Right. And then, you know what I'm saying? I was in bro. it for two years up there. Bro. It is ridiculous. It is. It's but a you're lot. everywhere. Yeah. And the concepts are crazy. When but Chad they good, though. Chad yeah. went to yeah. New England. We were talking in the middle of the field. We were playing New England. He's like, RC, it's just so different from anything I've ever done. It is. It you is. You know what I mean? Nah, it's a, it's a beast. And it's not for, like, you. they can't just bring just talent in here. You got to mm -hmm. be talented and smart. Right. Otherwise, right. like, especially if it's like late, if they bring somebody in right now, right. you got to be a genius to catch on and be, really? you know what I'm saying? Especially like, and they give me more leeway and, and I, I pride myself on being like, like really my football acumen is mm -hmm. like one of my bit, right. like best traits. So right. when it comes to like learning it and I study it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just cause I'm not going to be the one that, that's out there right. looking Hell crazy. Yeah. Right. So when I, when I get out there, like, if I do mess something up, they do understand because I have to learn that every single spot. Mm -hmm. Like, most dudes is just playing X or whatever, so you just right. learn the X. But right. I, got, I don't know, every single spot, and then the formations is crazy because right. they got a formation name, and then they got a code word for every <laughs> single formation. Quick, hurry up. Bro, that's, that's ridiculous, ev though. Every single the formation. Read, gotta, yeah. snaps, breaking off routes. This shit is crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. I was in my side adjust, for you, yeah, though, yeah. you, though, you got to move, though, because every week, if I'm game planning, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out where you are. Right. Right. And so now if we know, all right, third and, third and medium, mm -hmm. you know, he's here and empty, this is what we're going to play. Right. But the right. fact that you could play each spot, not yeah. a coach guessing. Mm -hmm. And like you said, then if Darren get the matchup, it could be six. You know what I'm saying? So that's dope, man. Hell yeah. We're going to get it in, tough man. cover. Man, get to your meet, yeah. man. We appreciate yeah. you, though, bro. I don't make you late, though. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Uh -huh. bro. We just talking shit all day. Bro. I know, yeah. If, I'm saying, you, yeah, if he's late, yeah, nah, he's late. Right. We good. We yeah. good. What time we got? <laughs> oh, yeah, we good. All right. All right. Appreciate y'all. Right. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up.